This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they usually say our seasonings will take your barbecue from good to great. The great seasonings such as the S&P Bud, the Oak, Brits Bland, and the Old Fashioned. You can't go wrong with any of the seasonings that the Mad Canadian has to offer at his site. MadCanadianBBQ.com. That is the MadCanadianBBQ.com. For this month only, be sure to use the promo code one year two zero. That is. Never mind. Nope. Nope. Ignore me. I'm fine. <laughs> that is one spell out O N E Y E A R two zero. I check out for 20. That is right. 20% off for this month of October for 20% off your entire order. And Canadian also wants us to let you know that he will be this Friday will be in Cary at the corner of North and Patterson from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. as well as Saturday from noon to 3 p at noon excuse me noon to 4 p.m. at Cary Ace Hardware. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, they have your butt covered. What's up YouTube? Jared messing me up here. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'll I'll explain why during when we rejoin the the audio only folk. I want I want everyone to hear why I almost messed you up. So I don't want just the YouTube people to hear why. So this is I I'm going to full fledged apologize to you. By the way, we have dog cam. She's just off frame. But she's a, she's she's a good girl. There we go. Oh, hitting hitting the desk. All right, let's rejoin the audio folk. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well. How are you today, Jared? I owe you an apology, Kyle. Owe you an apology. Oh, I owe a few people apologies. I'm gonna start with you though. I I messed up your first ad read. And I apologize. Um, the Mad Canadian gave the Discord listeners a special promo code that's worth more than 20%. And I thought Kyle was about to just give that away on on the podcast. You know, Jared, <laughs> and if, I you for, look at, if you look at the notes, it, you, it says right there. I know. And this is why I'm... Apo- See, I'm apologizing... Normally, when someone apologizes, the recipient of said apology doesn't then turn around and and try and make it worse. So I think you owe me an apology now. No. No. (laughs) That's fair. Okay. Apologies. I I owe, I think I owe Georgia football an apology. And I think I own Stenson Bennett an apology. I think I made a rush judgments on on the on that uh, team and that individual after one game and uh, I think they might look pretty good uh, we might have a deeper I'm gonna say deeper because I still think Bama is the best in the in the SEC but we might have a deeper SEC East than SEC West right now which is weird to say out loud That is, yes. <laughs> More on that coming up here. Yeah. <clears throat> well, what, right, let's get into it. Let's get into... We were already into it. What do you mean, let's get into it? I was already talking about football. <sighs> you know, uh, Kyle? Kyle. Jared. You owe me an apology now. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the... Uh... College football playoffs here. Uh, there's been a lot of rumblings the past week, two weeks here about, or even longer than that, really, about possibly changing the formula or changing it from four to to possibly six for this year, just because. Or eight. Or eight, because why not? It's 2020. <laughs> Basically. Uh, 2020? <laughs> why, why, why just for this year? 2020. Because mm-hmm. might 2020. As, might as well. Because 2020. Uh, 
but they uh, they came out and said that no, no, no additional teams this year. It's still going to be four teams. Uh, they did though announce that they're going to be moving back a week. So I think there's not going to be one less week of um, fake. <laughs> of fake college football playoff rankings yes yeah yeah but the final ranking will still be on december 20th yeah uh i think that's the one that a lot of us wanted to see pushed back mm -hmm. yeah. um, and i saw and i saw some people was like well that's still like three too many there should just be one <laughs> yes uh we've all said that from the very beginning why on well and we all know why on earth we can so, why on earth da, 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 da. because espn that's why we all know that all of the rankings up until the last one are pointless and stupid and dumb yet where are all of we that's a bad sentence on tuesday nights we're sitting there watching that's what we're doing so right here right back in our own faces yes I, heard, I think um, I think under the guise of because 2020, it would have been a great opportunity to pilot program an eight team playoff in the same way that I hope that the ACC and some of these other conferences that are not doing divisions this year. I'd mm -hmm. like I like to think that this is maybe them piloting this. We don't need divisions. I don't I don't know why. We are so married to the idea that we need divisions. Why? Tradition. Is it? The divisions haven't been around that long. Do you True. think? <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know when. I feel like conference championship games are not that old. I don't think they existed at the time of our births, is that correct? Because you had to, like, by the NCAA rules, I think you had to have, and this might still be a rule, I don't remember. No, it's not, because the the Big 12, I don't think, has 12 teams right now. You had to have 12 teams to have a conference championship game. And the conferences haven't had 12 teams all that long. The Big Ten was 11 teams not that long ago. They mm -hmm. were 10 teams not that long ago. Penn State joined in 93, Something 90, like that. 92, 93. The Big Eight used to be a thing. I mean, it was the Big 12, but then the Big Eight, <laughs> pardon the pun, ate the Southwest Conference. So that's when the Big 12, you know what I mean? Like this latest round of conference reshuffling wasn't the first round of conference reshuffling. We 1990. did all this. 19, 1990 for the first conference championship game? No, for, for Penn State. Oh, for Penn State. Uh, so point is, is that I don't think traditions that it, we're, we're talking about at most a 30 year tradition, like at most. It's not. In the grand scheme of college football, that's nothing. Mm -hmm. And for the Pac-12 and the Big Ten, Big Ten hasn't haven't has not even had East and West all that long. I uh, screw divisions; they're pointless. <laughs> I don't. Other than we currently have them, what's the point of having them? All right, that's enough of that, Kyle. Three new black stripes have been removed. So does that make them three old black stripes since they're no longer in use? Oh, hmm. I, not thinking about it. Going to hurt myself. Hmm. Three. <laughs> Lathon, Ransom, um, Josh Fryer, and Mayan Williamson have all shed their black stripes. Uh, but we are now three wide receivers well, uh, this is now the second running back technically because Sermon who transferred from Oklahoma lost his black stripe. Um, but you know, that's, that's, that's the sort of one you just expect to happen right away. Um, yeah, I don't, yeah, it's, uh, black stripes are coming off. Black stripes are coming off. A lot of positive buzz 
around the young wide receivers. Um, uh, the Saturday scrimmage, well, not the scrimmage. The scrimmage was not open to the media. They had a scrimmage. The scrimmage was not open to the media, but the media did get in to watch the first half. Half might be generous. The first section, the first part of the Saturday practice at the Horseshoe. And I mean, it wasn't much. I mean, I'm sure that, uh, that Tony and Tom were happy to get into the shoe on a Saturday just for the sake of spending a fall Saturday in the shoe. When, you know, such a thing, for, especially for them, because they go for work every single game just to be mm-hmm. there. I'm sure that was great for them. But, you know, they saw some drills and some warm ups and some stretching, um, but didn't get to see the actual scrimmage. But a lot of what we're hearing is a lot of reinforcement of what we've sort of just had trickle out of of the camp so far, which is that. A, the, we have three wide receivers, true freshmen, who are going to be in heavy rotation. Yes. You're going to have three freshman wide receivers in heavy rotation, maybe from week one. Uh, Trey Sermon may not be, like, number one by himself. The, the way J.K. Dobbins was, like, he was basically number one and number two last year. Mm-hmm. Um, we might not be to that level with Trey Sermon. It still might be one A, one B between Trey Trey Sermon and Master Teague, but it does look like potentially that Trey Sermon is in fact the one A. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's that's what it's appearing to be, and and really, it shouldn't really come to any surprise too. With, with what we saw out of him at Oklahoma too. And yeah. the type, the type of running back he really is, it just really fits well at Ohio state here. So I think he'll definitely really bloom in this Ohio state offense. Yeah. And I think this version of this Ohio state offense, I don't think mm. this Ohio state offense is going to be the exact offense that we saw out of Ohio state last year. No, this year, this year it's going to be, this year it's going to be more pass first, run second. <laughs> yes, yeah, I, um, I absolutely agree. It's just if last, I, I don't, I have no idea what the play breakdown was last year. Uh, they may have thrown the ball more times than they ran it. I, I honestly don't know what the math says on that, but it was definitely the offense started with J.K. Dobbins. Mm-hmm. He set the tone. He got the carries. It was. Maybe, I mean, you definitely, I mean, one, (laughs) Justin Fields is the one that went to the Heisman ceremony. So I'm not, you know, I don't want to overstate it, but it was at least the foundation of the offense was J.K. Dobbins, even if he wasn't the star or whatever of the offense that still belonged to Justin Fields. But Justin Fields is now the entire thing. This offense will start, begin, end with Justin Fields. This will be a pass-first offense. Mm -hmm. And I I do think Trey Sermon probably fits that mold a little bit better than J.K. Dobbins or Master Teague. Mm -hmm. As a, what we in the, back in the day would have referred to as him being a third down running back. That was a term we used to use that's not really relevant anymore, but Trey Sermon is more that mold as opposed to Master Teague or J.K. Dobbins, who back in the day you would have referred to as first and second down running backs. Mm -hmm. Last year, Jared? Yeah. Average per game, 47 attempts rushing, Mm -hmm. 28 passing. There you go. So about about 20 20 more attempts rushing. First, thank you for looking that up. Second, that's... (laughs) That's probably pretty heavily skewed by like mm-hmm. Master Teague getting junk carries. Like I bet you, if you just went in there and you subtracted the entirety of well, Master not just that, but any kind of scrambles to would be considered a run as well. That as are sacks in the college football game; those go into the books as as running plays. Mm-hmm. That's actually a really good question. Like how many times he got sacked. 
Hmm. It's probably in the stats. I'm not saying look it up, but it's it's typically a <laughs> stat that they keep. But yeah, it just when I say I'm not at all surprised that the run pass was that heavy towards the run, but that does not necessarily indicate the plays called for a lot yeah. of different reasons. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. So those are the black stripes. Kyle, we have a new commit for the 2021 class. Kind of hinted this on our <laughs> last episode here. Just, just a little kind, bit. Kind of hinted. <laughs> just a little bit. No, we definitely didn't hint it. I definitely didn't know this was happening. <laughs> Mikowski. Yes. Zen Mikowski has officially committed to Ohio State. Um, he's a late rising mm-hmm. star three, in the 2021 class. Kind of a three slash four star border. He's a he's a three star guy. He's going to be a force by by the time the final rankings from the final composite comes out sometime in February. I have a really good feeling that he's going to earn that fourth star. Kyle, I don't Mm -hmm. have the tweet in front of me. Um, I want to try and find it potentially. Okay. Um, Last week we talked a bit about how these players kind of went into a black box because there wasn't a um, a summer camp series. There wasn't a lot of visitation. So a lot of these players just sort of disappeared into a black box and then reemerged later into football season. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't really easy to sort of track and evaluate what these players were doing or the developmental changes that they went through, both from a skill standpoint uh, but also from a just a body change standpoint. These are young people who spend a lot of time in the weight room who are still just as human beings growing up. Sometimes we lose sight on how young these players are. Yeah. Um, I am still just talking, trying to find this tweet. <laughs> um, I'm not going to find this tweet in a way that isn't going to lead to me talk talking for an obnoxious long time killing time but it was something like his weight went from i want to say it was like 225 to 290 from last season to this season in a year he has went from 220 pounds to 290 pounds so if you Ask the question, how does an offensive lineman go from off of the board almost to all of a sudden getting scholarship offers from Penn State and Ohio State? Kyle, Kyle looks like he has it. 217 to 290. (laughs) Even, even greater than that. Yeah. So like, so sometimes you're like, you know, if, if you don't follow recruiting closely, you might ask yourself, well, how does a guy go? What's the, how, how, what he just got that much (laughs) <laughs> two, two reasons. Yeah. One, dedication in the weight room. Uh-huh. And two, grandma's cooking. Hells yeah. <laughs> grandma's cooking. Yes. And by the way, with a last name like Mikowski, you know grandma's uh, cooking with butter. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> she cooks with, with butter butter and like leftover bacon fat. Like there's there's no margarine. There's no Pam spray taking place in that household. That's a cast iron pan and a half a stick of butter. Yes. All right. Let's see. What do we want to talk next here, Jared? Yeah. What do we want to talk? Let's about? do the, let's do the national review. Um, a lot happened this weekend. Kyle, we had a quadruple team chaos this weekend. Yes. Team chaos strikes. Quadruple team chaos. And for a lot of teams not playing, that's a mm-hmm. lot. All right. So which one do you want to cover first? Um, let's see. So let's, let's focus on the team chaos. Chaoses? Chaos? K-I? The team chaoses. Uh, let's... How do you... How do you pluralize the word chaos? <laughs> moving forward, moving forward, moving forward. Um, TCU defeats Texas. Kyle, 
Is Texas back? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, here's my argument, Kyle. Texas is back. They're back to where they belong. Every year they get moved out of where they belong and into the top 10 or into the top 15 in these preseason polls. And now Texas is back. And by which I mean they're unranked again mm. or close to it because this is where Texas belongs. Mm. Probably the probably the most common thing that you saw Saturday night was um, the quarterback. It just when when they won the bowl game, oh, it wasn't yeah. last. Was I don't think it was last year. I think it was yeah, the it year was, before. It, like, it We're was. back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sam Ellinger, uh, who is not a Heisman candidate. Um, yeah. I was about to say he's no longer a Heisman candidate, but he never was. <laughs> no, never was. He never was, no matter what anyone tried to tell you, he never was. Mm -hmm. So that, oh. that's Team Chaos number one. Team Chaos number two, Oklahoma gets defeated by Team Chaos for the second straight week. Oklahoma State. is unranked. Iowa State. Which is the team that Kyle picked, and I made fun of him. I so I guess I'm, I'm going to celebrate now because they're going to lose next week. So <laughs> maybe I'm going to, I'm going to celebrate. I made fun of Kyle for saying, and in my defense, Iowa state was zero and one at the time after losing to a Sunbelt team. Mm -hmm. And by the way, to Kyle's credit for that matter. So this is me apologizing to Kyle for a second time. I am. I need to get apologizing to Kyle on air. Uh, <laughs> I'm the one that talks a lot. Kyle's the one that actually knows what he's saying. If you haven't figured that out in six seasons, that's how this show works. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, Kyle's Kyle called Iowa state as the, as a team that would be in the big 12 championship game. And I made fun of him and, and here they are, uh, in the driver's seat. Yeah, they're only, well, there's only one undefeated team left in the Big 12. But um, Iowa State's one loss was out of conference play. So they are undefeated in the conference, which is what mm -hmm. matters when trying to determine who goes to the conference championship game. Fun stuff. Yes. Yes. All right. Team Chaos number three, Tulsa defeats the UCF Knights. This was one of our sort of group of six darlings. It seems to be one. Of, it's just, you know, we always have this conversation of like, who's the best group of six team. And this year, the conversation was mostly surrounding a trio of American conference teams. And UCF is a team that has falsely claimed the national championship in the past, but they did it against Bama. Like Bama was the rightful national champions that year. So anytime anyone wants to claim a false national championship and Bama's the primary victim, that's fine. Because according to Bama, they have like 35,000 championships. Most of them false. But uh, yeah, uh, UCF false. Um, uh, additionally, Memphis falls, uh, that's another group of six darling and they have also fallen, uh, to SMU, who I think is now along with Cincinnati, the new group of six darling. Yes, they are. <clears throat> so some other ones that you haven't mentioned here though, Jared, that they're, they may not be necessarily team chaos, but upsets. Uh, we could probably throw in Arkansas defeating Mississippi State. Mm -hmm. Yep. Put that in there. The Wolfpack defeating Pittsburgh. Was Pittsburgh even, we don't they acknowledge were they, they were. I, I thought they were. Uh, I might be mistaken. But... I believe you're mistaken. Okay. I've been paying attention to polls and neither should you. So I'm not 100% sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, but if we're talking about your, your neck of the woods down there in the, uh, North Carolina triangle, mm -hmm. uh, North Carolina did escape just barely 
Yeah, I was I was rooting for the Eagles there. I was rooting for the Eagles. I really wanted uh really wanted uh Halfley. Halfley, yep, to get his first to get a big win there. Yeah, and I mean you the final score 26-24, which is slightly deceiving because Boston College was going for a two point conversion to tie the game. Uh, the ball was intercepted and returned, and therefore the Tar Heels got the two points instead, which is how you end up with a four-point victory. Was it? Oh, I got gotcha. you. Okay. So I think that's it for our big upsets. Let's see some other other notable games here. If I repeat them, apologize. I'm just going over <laughs> what I see on the list here. BYU um, beat up Louisiana Tech. BYU uh, might be, I mean, they're they're not a group of six. They're they're still an independent, are they not? I believe that mm-hmm. they are. Uh, BYU uh, is another, let's just say, non-group of five, darling. Uh, so I think maybe we're back up to. Well, I guess they were always there, but yeah, we're we're looking to maybe because this is a weird year and Team Chaos is already uh, flexing a lot. Mm-hmm. Could this uh, be a year Florida. that we get a non-Power 5 in the playoff? I don't think this year. Probably not. No. But it's fun to talk about. It is. It is. Florida, uh, the score is a little misleading. It was yeah. a really close game. It was. Throughout mo- most of it. Florida wins a 14-point um, victory over South Carolina. I don't know how close it really was. Um, it kind of felt like... And not to give away the Clemson conversation later, this kind of felt like the same games where yeah. if no matter what the score says or no matter what the score said at any point, there was never any real doubt that Florida or Clemson were going to lose, even if mm-hmm. they kind of, you know, were sleepwalky in the games. Yeah. Tennessee, I, I still don't have anything good to say about Tennessee, but they still, they, they win their game against Missouri, a terrible, terrible Missouri team. Kyle, there are only four undefeated teams left in the SEC. Can you name them? Alabama, Mm -hmm. Georgia, Mm -hmm. Tennessee. Uh Uh-huh. And we literally just talked about Florida. In Florida. Tennessee was, you messed it. You messed up my bit, Kyle. Tennessee was supposed to be the difficult one to pick out. You should have known Florida right away. Yeah. I, by the way, I really, really, really like Florida this year. Kyle Trask is a problem. He is a problem. The defense just needs to step it up. Yeah, really. Um, I'm, I'm just, I'm looking forward to, uh, what we once referred to as the, uh, world's largest cocktail party. I don't think they call it any, I don't think they call it anything like that anymore. Um, Mm -hmm. because God forbid we encourage college students might be drinking. Mm. How, how dare we acknowledge the truth? I don't know what they call it now. All right. Uh, let's see here. Talked about TCU. Talked about North Carolina. The, the Cowboys of Oklahoma State win again. Jer- we mentioned earlier they're yeah. the only undefeated Big 12 team right now. Yeah, and they, they had a really, really, really rough first game. Uh, they could have easily lost uh, against – was was that also a Sun Belt team? Um, it was not a great team. Uh, yeah, it was, it was that first where game. Where was it in America? Yeah, it was Tulsa. Or, uh, okay, so that's an American conference team. But yeah, regardless, uh, a group of six team, it was a part of uh, the Big 12's incredibly mm-hmm. struggle-filled first weekend of football that saw Iowa State loss, uh, Iowa State lose to a Sunbelt team and a few of their other teams lose to Sunbelt teams. Uh, Oklahoma State did survive their weekend, even if they looked bad, but they've looked pretty good since. Uh, competition has not been high, but they have looked good since. So keeping an eye on the uh, on the Cowboys. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Alabama does Alabama things. Uh. Yeah, that the the final score fifty two to twenty four. Um, it looked like Bama was going to run away with it. They score 14 points right out of the gate. Mm-hmm. 
Then the Aggies score 14 points right out. Just all the, like you almost want to just turn it off and walk away. Oh, okay. Bam is doing Bama stuff. Let me check out the Clemson game or something. Then the Aggies come running back. They get their 14 points, albeit um, in a bit of a, I don't want to say fluky. That, that might be an insult, but um, mm-hmm. in, in an abnormal way. Uh, and then after that, Bama just rolled. That, that, that game was our tiebreaker. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So the total <laughs> point was 76. The oh. closest one was the closest one was Austin Graham, who had 67. Who Myself had... and uh, Suncard put 63. Well, and mine was like 55, right? Yours was, I got to scroll down. Because... <laughs> <laughs> Kyle is so mean to me, you guys. Oh, but we love you, Jared. Uh, yeah, you had 55. And Bama about had that just by themselves. <sighs> Texas A&M, I have no idea why people rank them so high. Because they're in the SEC and because they're from the state of Texas. They get a double a double preseason ranking bonus. Right. Well, that and people keep expecting Kellen Mund to live up to his potential. I believe mm-hmm. he was the like number one ranked quarterback in his recruiting class, if memory serves. If not, he was darn close. So yeah. people keep expecting him to live up to that potential. And there are moments, there are moments with Kellen Mund in which he looks like he is everything he was supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And then there are moments in which he gives the game away. And yeah. that's just who Kellen Mund has been his entire career. Yep. Uh, let's see. SMU. Uh, I think this was an upset, was it? Memphis was ranked. We already, yeah, we already talked yep, about we it. We mentioned that already. Yeah. Cincinnati, the Fighting Fickles. Um, what I tell you? The Fighting Fickles. What I tell you? I, when we were doing the slew picks, I was like, yeah, Cincinnati's going to win this, but Fickle has too much stress in him. The, the the score of this game was 28 to seven forever. <laughs> Cincinnati could have a lot. Up- a, a lot of people picked Cincinnati here. There was only four. There was only four people. Half of them right here talking. Yeah. <laughs> that picked South Florida. Yeah. That was one of the few games we actually won this weekend. Yeah. Not, not a great sloop pick performance from Kyle and I. Not from anybody really. We'll go into that here in yeah, a yeah. bit. Well, we'll do that on the other side of the ad break. All right. Um, wrapping up here, Georgia beating out Auburn, uh, LSU. Well, I already. Well, you just, we're just gonna we just gonna roll over that one. I mean, I personally apologize to Georgia, so I guess I covered it a bit. But yes, that was a big deal. I think you and I were both pretty high on Auburn and pretty low on Georgia, were we not? Mm-hmm. I think we both laughed at the at the point spread and both predicted an upset kind of while chuckling about it. Um, so egg on our face. I don't, yeah. I don't want to be one of these people who goes out and only highlights the things I was correct about. I'm totally willing to admit when I am wrong. And it appears that I was double wrong about both Georgia and Auburn. Yeah. I would say, yeah, I'm definitely surprised by Georgia just because of, history with georgia here but definitely be keeping a closer eye closer closer eye on georgia here but let's see here next games with georgia tennessee and alabama i I think they'll still kill tennessee i don't care what i don't care that tennessee is undefeated right now more more on that on friday's episode yeah all right uh wrapping up here lsu just beating just beating to death of Vanderbilt, forty-one to seven. <laughs> Talked about Arkansas beating Mississippi State, Tulsa over at UCF, and Clemson uh, beating Virginia, forty-one to twenty-three. It was definitely a, the game was not even close. That twenty-three, they scored a t- Virginia scored a touchdown with under two minutes left. Yeah, Clemson just didn't bring a killer instinct to this game. They let Virginia hang around anytime. Virginia, I think Virginia brought it within 10 points fairly late in the game. And then Clemson's offense was just like, Oh, what? We're still playing. Okay. Our bad. And then just went out there and immediately scored after mm-hmm. they, like I said, they, 
you're Clemson. You win almost every game you play in. They took a bit of a mental breather against Virginia. I think that's all that it was. Yep. They Did they look good? No, they didn't look good. Is Virginia bad? Yeah, Virginia's bad. But whatever. Like, sometimes really good teams just don't show up super motivated because that's hard to do every single week. That's all this was. Yep. Um, what else here? You added two more games here, Jared. Yeah. Um, Ole Miss and Kentucky was just entertaining just because of the high level of dysfunction, but high mm-hmm. level of entertainment that these two teams possess. Um, they go into overtime. Kentucky had the ball first and proceeded to score a touchdown pretty quickly, but then missed the extra point in overtime. Hashtag college kickers. Hashtag college kickers. Yeah. Um, the Mississippi teams are going to be fun this year. It's not to say they're going to be good. They're going to be fun this year. They're going to be train wrecks and mm-hmm. they're going to be wildly inconsistent and they're going to be fun to watch. Yeah. Last one here. You have Jared air force beating out Navy 40 to seven. Yeah. That's a complete demolishing. Whew. That's it. That's all. All right, Kyle, you want to talk to our good friend, the Mad Canadian? Yes, the Mad Canadian. Mad Canadian, if you didn't hear at the top of the show, we're going to say it again here. If you want to meet the Mad Canadian and you are in Northwest Ohio, the Mad Canadian will be across from the fire department in Cary, Ohio, which is in the corner of North and Patterson, Friday, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., or Saturday, noon to 4 p.m. at the Cary Ace hardware store uh be sure to tell him that this folks at sloopcast <laughs> I, don't I think want... i did that last week too <laughs> i sent you <laughs> all right jared what do, what do you got what do you got behind you there what do you want to talk oh. about here I, I brought most of the spices back from the kitchen uh which one do you want to talk about just just pick uh, one for let's me. see here let's talk about one of my favorites the sonoran heat the sonoran, the sonoran heat. heat i think i have one of those back here I'm not talking into the mic. I apologize. Um, the Sonoran Heat is one of my favorites. Here it is. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a do-it-aller. It is. Um, I, I'll, t- I'll tell you right now that I obviously great, great on chicken. Uh, yeah. I also put that sometimes on burgers. Give a little bit of a kick. And, and my wife puts it on uh, some salmon. Yeah. it's Like I said, it's a great versatile spice. Kyle, like he just said, can put it on both his burger and his wife's salmon. So that shows you how versatile it is. But also Kyle likes spicier food, but his wife doesn't. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a, it's also a really good sort of halfway yeah, in between. It... It's a little bit of a kick. It's not, it's not mm-hmm. a kick in the pants. <laughs> I almost said something else. <laughs> um, if you're looking for a kick in the pants, uh, then you're probably going to want to go either discord or four horsemen. Yes. Um, I had myself sweating uh with with that one on friday I put a little too much in the pan so i kind of pepper sprayed <laughs> myself just from the just from it cooking in the pan uh mm-hmm. I, just, I just put a little too much in but yep. so why not why not grab both of them grab a sonoran heat yeah to get a little kick and then grab a four horsemen to make it get some good chicken wings or yeah. something to give it a nice nice heat yeah to drink to drink with a uh with a local beer in your hand. There you go. All right. Be sure to use the promo code one spelled out O N E year 20. That is O N E Y E A R 20 for 20% off your entire order. (laughs) Um, Mad Canadian has been a proud uh, sponsor of this loop cast here for a year. Now this is, we are going a year now with, the mad Canadian um, really proud to have them um, help out with this, with the show here. Um, really good, really good guy. I'm glad to see that his business is doing well and that we continue to have this partnership for. Yeah. For I a mean, while. In a year he's added the food bus. He is doubled the number of spices he has. Is that right? close about about. so it's just sort of growing together and in that same year kyle and i have moved on to the buckeye scoop which we're very so just sort of growing together and and doing stuff together and we're we're super happy to have the mad canadian on board because he has my kyle and your butts covered 
Nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jared, what yeah. do you want to talk about next here? Uh, let's see real quick. I want to revisit Oklahoma and the disaster that they are. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe just the big 12 in general. <laughs> uh, there is only one big 12 team left undefeated. And that's Oklahoma state. Mm -hmm. who is a team that has both looked really good and really bad this year. But Oklahoma, let's talk about Oklahoma for a second. All right. Oklahoma has lost two straight games, which they have not done since 1999. So on one hand, let's applaud Oklahoma for some consistency. So that's, that's great for them. Mm -hmm. Now let's also acknowledge that, that, you know, it's, it's, it's historically significant. They, they've, and what maybe this means for the team, especially in a big 12, that's pretty far down this year. Um, and this isn't like losing to, you know, Texas and then <laughs> TCU back when TCU was good. Um, or, you know what I mean? Like losing to like, you know, in this time frame, losing to like Texas A&M and Nebraska back to back teams that used to be in the big 12. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's significant, but I also want to point out not only is Nebraska now lost two straight games, they have now lost three of their last four games, having lost to LSU last year in the playoffs. And they're now, if we only consider FBS teams, Oklahoma is now three straight losses because they played an FCS team in their warm-up week. They're the out of conference Big 12 week that 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 they did a few weeks ago. That was an FCS school. Oklahoma has lost three straight team uh three straight games against FBS teams. Three straight losses for Oklahoma. Yikes. I yikes. think is my only real takeaway there is yikes. And they get to play Texas next. Yikes. Not, I mean, what do we think about Texas right now, though? Well, find out Friday. <laughs> Come listen to us on Friday. Come listen to the Friday episode. <laughs> All right, let's see here. One team, as Jared just mentioned, only one team in the Big 12 undefeated, two in the Sun Belt, three in the Conference USA, four teams in the AAC and the SAC, and five teams in the ACC. I'd like to point out that all 14 Big Ten teams are currently undefeated. Yes, sir. Champions. No one has more. Well, Jared, what about the Pac-12? Oh, there's only 12. What about the Mountain West or the MAC? Oh, there's only 12 of those. Big Ten, 14 undefeated teams right now. Boom. For two more weeks. <laughs> Wait, be and then seven. That, <laughs> and then that number gets cut in half. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's yeah, it's fun times we're living in. Weird, mm-hmm. unique, fun times. Mm-hmm. Another fun time here is our slew picks. Yeah, our slew picks. So we picked seven games here, and of those seven games, uh, Tanner came out with the most correct. For last week with four so if that says anything about last last weekend here ton of upsets and just a just chaos, chaos. yeah yeah um and, and we even or i think you even said on a friday's episode like huh we both picked the same teams yeah that means that we're going to get most of them wrong and i think that was in a discord conversation because i think i was talking to Austin or some, I think it was Austin. Um, when like we were just sort of after the kickoffs, we just sort of sometimes get into the discord and, and compare some picks. And it was just like, Oh man, we all agree on a lot of these, which means this is going to be a disaster. That's, that's ultimately what that means. It's going to be a disaster. Um, yep. that being we had, said, we defeated we had, Austin. <laughs> yeah, We had, um, so Tanner had four, for last weekend, and then we had six others who had three right. Yeah, uh, not 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 a great deal to bet against Vegas. Not a great week to bet against Vegas. That's that's mm-hmm. for sure. So now, if we look at the overall now, yeah, uh, let's see. 
uh, Jay is still in the lead with 10. Mad Canadian and Tanner with nine and Duncan with nine. And then I don't know a name here. So I'm just going to go off of what he put here. It's the <laughs> abandoned <laughs> Ohio cemetery <laughs> and myself with eight. And then Jared, Austin, Melissa, and Suncard with seven. There you go. Well, well, We'll, we'll we'll talk to the abandoned cemetery later. Uh, he's one of our guest pickers. Uh, our sloop picks, by the way, are made up of uh, Discord members and people who will be doing guest picking later this year. Yep. So we have a total of sixteen this year. Uh, so yeah, we'll 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 see see if there's any separation next <laughs> next week here. Uh, yeah, should be fun here. So speaking of the Sloop Cats over in the Discord, uh, we have some Ask Sloop Cats questions to get to, Kyle. Yes, let's get to it. All right, first up here, Jared, from Austin Formation. Uh, he has a couple of questions, but we'll start here. Should the Pac-12 be punished playing? Nope, we answered that question already. Never mind. Uh, Dinger. <laughs> uh, Dinger asks us, I am only 20 minutes in uh, from listening to Friday's episode. Pulled into work this morning right when you started the Sloopcast Answers. I don't think you should have read that one, Kyle. Yep, that's right. <laughs> Sorry, I did a uh, <laughs> I did a search for Ask Sloopcast and he did that. So, yeah. The question from Dinger, but thank the, you for the, listening. This is off to a great start, Kyle. You're killing it. <laughs> All right, let's do this one. Duncan, Duncan. All right, this is a question. <laughs> Good uh, job. Even though he did, even though, um, nope, this one isn't even a question either, <laughs> but we're just, <laughs> we're just going to go right through here. Uh, he says, do we even want them both to stay? Nothing good ever comes of an undecided quarterback battle. Um, yeah. Even we, Urban wasn't immune. Yeah, uh, he's referring to the quarterback battle that... Uh, could exist, uh, well, will exist next year and could exist this year, um, mm -hmm. God forbid, uh, between Stroud and Miller. And you want an undecided quarterback battle right up until it's time to play. Yeah. Um, make no mistake, the fact that Ohio State had both Haskins and Burrow made both Haskins and Burrow better. And the problem will fix itself because much like Haskins and Burrow, the guy that doesn't win will transfer out. Mm -hmm. It's, it's really just that simple, but you want the competition. You want multiple people there. Cause like I said, I, I mean, it's iron sharpens iron. The having both Haskins and Burrow made them both better. Yep. Uh, next question here. Uh, Duncan asks, um, will name and likeness money allow minor sport athletes to accept prize money in non-NCAA competition? Such no. as like running running and winning 30 bucks at a local 5K. No, because then you're accepting money for the competition that you're partaking in. Not your likeliness. Your your likeness. <laughs> like likeness. Thank there you, you. go. Um this happens in golf sometimes, by the way, where amateur golfers, uh, sometimes NCAA athletes, will play in a pro tournament, but then not accept the prize money at the end, if any's due. This happens. Um, the difference here being is that before, let's stick with the golf analogy, a golf athlete couldn't accept free clubs directly from himself, maybe through, through the university. Maybe he could, I don't know much about golf and, and how the NCAA rules work around that. Uh, but now he could directly make a deal with ping. I think that's a golf club or Callaway. I think that's a golf thing uh, where before he couldn't. So you want to talk about like minor sport athletes, a tennis player can accept a thing from Wilson. Um, I'm 
I'm going to fail to <laughs> uh, let's see a different tennis company, a different tennis company. Nope. Uh, it doesn't matter. Point is, is that you can do like advertisements and stuff like that, but you can't accept money for actually doing the sport itself and prize money mm-hmm. counts in that. Again, we already, we already know that because of things like golf where in an open us open whatever as opposed to an invitational anyone can qualify for it including amateur athletes but to maintain your ncaa eligibility you can't accept the prize money yep all right um one more from duncan how much damage is the big 10 sitting by for three more weeks while ESPN is fawning over the SEC and one ACC quarterback like Brent Musburger with AJ McCarron's girlfriend <laughs> doing the field's Heisman hopes. Uh, first and foremost, I just, I don't care about the Heisman. I really, 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 really don't. Um, so whatever. I think they're going to give the high, unless Trevor Lawrence really gives them a reason not to, I think they're going to give the Heisman to Trevor Lawrence this year because, and this shouldn't matter, but does because you can't tell the voters what you can tell them what matters, but they don't have to listen. Um, it'll be a career achievement award given to Trevor Lawrence. Cause he's what, cause he's been doing it for three years and you, we can talk about if that's right or if that's wrong, but it doesn't matter. Um, I think Trevor Lawrence, again, unless he gives them reason not to, will win the Heisman this year regardless. Yep. Um, Now, as far as Ohio State sitting and the Heisman, again, I don't know. You have less games, which hurts your stats, so that hurts. Um, But, again, this is about winning a national championship, not a Heisman. And, Mm -hmm. quite frankly, it looks like a really good thing to be sitting right now. Yes, watching Oklahoma lose their second game and Texas lose. Well, speaking speaking of sitting, you saw the picture going around from the Georgia cheerleaders. Yeah, I don't want to give them any more attention than they've already received. <laughs> I'd rather sit now than sit during the the playoffs. Uh, sure, but <laughs> Georgia looks good right now. That's that's all I'm saying. Georgia looks good. All right, we've got a um, few more questions here, all from Austin. That or Auburn looks terrible. It might be that. We don't really know yet. We'll see. How likely is it that a two-loss team can make the playoffs now that the Big 12 looks so awful? Maybe. <laughs> it's predicting the playoff any year is difficult. Predicting the playoff in this year is going to be next to impossible um the pack 12s back in it so we have that to, to yeah to i'm gonna say in. i'm gonna say that it's how likely is it that a two loss makes it now that big 12 looks so awful i wouldn't say it really i would say that it would if the pack 12 wasn't in it now or can go ahead and roll through the Pac-12 because I think the Pac-12 is bad. I'm not going to say hot garbage because I think that's the Big 12 right now. (laughs) Oregon is good, though. Oregon is good, yes. They Um, lost their left tackle, whose name is escaping me, though. He opted out, and it does not look like he's coming back. And he was arguably, maybe inarguably, the best player on that team. So that's not great for Oregon. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, other question Austin asks, what would you rather have the country's best corner or the country's best receiver? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I'm going to go with the country's best corner, especially if he's a, like a, a lockdown man to man mm-hmm. corner. Yes. Which, and I think we're talking about the nation's best corner. They, that sort of compliment is normally paid towards a lockdown man, man corner. Mm-hmm. Um, simply because you locked that, you locked down a quarter 
of the um of the field right there you lock that that line of scrimmage to 20 yards down if it's like on a 101 situ 101 scenario there you got a lockdown corner who's essentially got a quarter of the field on lockdown then you can just focus on the other three quarters of the field yeah um or for that matter it's just taking their best player off of the field um especially in a you know if it's a if it's a spread team that has five wide receivers on the field maybe not so much um I'm just really trying to talk myself out of it right now <laughs> but I, I think I want the best corner um because the corner can go out there and he can do his job and he can take away the offense's best wide receiver that's his job. He's going to go out there. He's going to do it mm-hmm. with the, with the country's best wide receiver. You know, you, if you have a really good defensive line, you can harass the quarterback and the receiver mm-hmm. becomes a non-factor or, or that they may focus more on that best receiver. Like, all right, they may have the safety also looking, even though they may do like a, like a zone, but it's still a, Hey, this is your zone, but your main focus is on that receiver there. So essentially you have two people yeah, covering you can, one receiver. You can double team the best wide receiver, but if you're putting all that focus on that wide receiver, that then does open the field up for the other players. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to go say the same thing on the defensive side. If you can take away one with one, you can focus more yeah. on other parts of it too. So. Yeah. When you're taking away their best, best wide receiver with just one of your guys, that frees up your mm-hmm. your other defensive backs and your linebackers to go focus on the run and go focus on the other stuff. Uh, it's a it's a good argument to be had. If someone yeah. really really wanted to, they might be able to talk me out of my choice. But I'm going to go best corner. Yep, I, I would tend to agree. Defense wins championships. All right, last question. I don't what know do how think? true that is anymore. But <laughs> where do you think Fields will be picked? in the draft if he has a similar season to what he had last year high i think he is five for sure that's hard to say because you don't know who's picking and if they already have the quarterback that they want to quarterback somebody's going to trade up potentially and you know what even probably Mm -hmm. i think it's just it's difficult to project anyone as a top five simply because there's going to be six or seven elite players. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and it just sometimes boils down to need. Um, if, if the, like I said, if the teams that are in that top five, and of course, like Kyle said, they can trade out, but if the teams in the top five have their future, if you know, Cincinnati is one of those teams, they're not, they're, they're, they're not going to a mm-hmm. trade out because yeah. they, they probably need say, the offensive tackle from Oregon, Mm -hmm. but they also already have Joe Burrow. You know what I mean? Um, So top five is difficult. I'll, I'll say about 10. Okay. Um, It's quarterbacks. Quarterbacks, a weird thing to project that. I do think that Trevor Lawrence projects better to the pros. So I think Trevor Lawrence, just size. Uh, Trevor yeah. Lawrence. There, there's there's a lot there um with Trevor Lawrence. Um I I think Trevor Lawrence is the first quarterback off of the board. Mm-hmm. So then where does the second quarterback get taken? I'm not buying this hype of the the kid from North Dakota State. I like him. He can go first round. He can be good in the NFL. That's all great. Uh I don't buy this idea that he should be picked ahead of Justin Fields. I think that's ludicrous. Um mm-hmm. If he has a, a comparable year to last year, I say top ten, top top fifteen for sure. It, it just depends upon, like I said, need and if another mm-hmm. quarterback works their way into the conversation. Yep. And right, you know I what? Look, I'm, I'm dancing around it. I'm just gonna say it. There's a lot of racist ass dudes in the NFL still who still think bad things about black quarterbacks. I was dancing around it, but screw it, I'll say it. 
we should be past that. And in most cases we are, but those people do still exist. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's stupid. It's ludicrous. It's awful. It's all of those things, but it, it exists. Yes. All right. With that, that is, <laughs> that is all we have in our notes for today's episode. If you have a question for us be sure to hit us up on twitter use the hashtag ask sloopcast ask any question that you um have for us or you can email us at sloopcast at gmail.com uh or you can hit us up on the discord um be sure to also use hashtag ask sloopcast just because of the amount of conversations that's going on there you know, be, we... and to become a patreon or yep. to become a to become a patron, be sure to check us out on the what? You become a patron on Patreon. You've had like a <laughs> lot of time to figure this out, Kyle. You become a patron. The app mm -hmm. is called Patreon. You become a patron on Patreon. On Patreon. Got it. <laughs> Technology. <laughs> English. Uh, English. <laughs> yes. Uh, check us out um, in the master show notes in the list. The master link in master the show link. notes. English. Why, why, why did you? <laughs> I do this thing at the All right, start of the end here, of the Jared. show. Why did up, you Jared. choose to take it from me if you weren't going to do it right? <laughs> well, pick it up. Go, Jared. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to ask Sloopcast, make sure to use the promo code. <laughs> I said promo code. Make sure to use the hashtag ask Sloopcast. Uh, you can do that in our Discord channel. Uh, you can do that uh, on our email, sloopcast at gmail.com, or you can do that on Twitter and we'll answer your question. We go on, before every show, we go on Twitter and we search has, hashtag ask sloopcast. We always check the email as I was just making sure right now. Uh, and of course our Discord users know what's up. Mm -hmm. If you want to be in the Discord, uh, you can join our Patreon. Uh, you can become a patron on Patreon. Uh, you get access to the Discord for as little as $3 a month. Guys, uh, on the Friday episode, I asked really nicely that we get like five new patrons and we got zero. Come on, guys. Can we, can we get one? Can we get one between now and the Friday episode? It's you. No, that, that, I thought we had one. Randy. No, Randy just sort of disappeared from the Discord for a minute ah. and then came back. Hi, okay. Randy. Hi, Randy. <laughs> um, All right. I think he just sort of took the season off or the off season off. Um, yeah. Come on guys. One, if it's, it's a you, lot of fun, if it's you and you're listening right now and you were teetering on the edge, maybe now's the time. <laughs> and if that's not your thing, if you're not just going to sign up for $3 a month, cause you don't want to do a monthly or whatever, you can still buy a t-shirt. Uh, you can buy a t-shirt and you can find these links in the master link. Uh, you can buy a t-shirt. Um, Kyle is not wearing merch today, uh, which is fine. Oh, he's sorry. not, he's not required to, it's not a law. I am, uh, this is the Canton rollers. This is out of our 70, 71 store. Um, I made up a bunch of fake sports franchises, uh, for cities in Ohio and I made logos for them cause I get bored sometimes. Um, but this is the Canton rollers. It's, uh, a few shades of blue on a black shirt. It's pretty cool. I like it. Um, also, if anyone out there is familiar with the old Ohio League, which was basically the precursor to the NFL, uh, I have made, I've recreated a bunch of the old logos for the Ohio League teams. This is, uh, again, in the 7071 store. And for a bunch of those old Ohio League teams, I created a modernized version. So there's both the classic logo and a modernized version of the logo for a bunch of those original Ohio league teams. Kyle, did you know that the NFL's original headquarters was in Columbus, Ohio? The original? Yes. Okay. Do you know the name of the Columbus team that was a part of the original NFL? 
And can you tell the person outside honking their horn to shut the hell up? <laughs> My dog's about to. Uh, <laughs> no, I can't remember off. The Columbus Panhandles. That's that that was their name. I think it was named after a store that you used to find along a railroad. I believe is the uh, is where that Ooh. name came from. So you can you buy right. You can buy uh, both a modernized modernized version of a Columbus Panhandles merch, as well as uh, a retro version, the original version of the logo over at the seventy seventy one store, as well as like the Canton Bulldogs, the Portsmouth um, Spartans, the Youngstown um, Patricians. They were great at names back in the 1910s. I tell you what, uh, let's see. There's a Cleveland Bulldogs. There was two Bulldogs. The Ohio was a lot like the SEC back in the day. There's a lot of Bulldogs. Um, let's see. Or the, well, that Columbus team used to be the Columbus Tigers as well. I think that was after or before the Panhandles. There were a lot of Tigers. Too. It was after. Okay. Point is, is that um, a bunch of those logos are in the 7071 store and if you don't know much about the ohio league it's it's a wikipedia article away it's the original precursor to the nfl and Mm -hmm. a lot of the towns in ohio had had teams that's it um kyle what do you have in kyle's corner i got a couple of things uh former ohio state broad receiver austin mack yes Austin Mack has been activated for the Giants. When did the Giants play? Or when did they? Play? Yeah, this is in the past for everyone else, unless it's Monday Night Football. <laughs> yep, and it looks like they are, as we're recording this, they are playing right now. Uh, so I don't, I don't know how much of the, how much he'll see the field, if any. But he's been activated for the Giants. So good to see, good to see him. Um, somewhat moving up in the NFL Uh, crew ties FC Dallas. I was hoping for three points, but points a point. (laughs) And Joe Burrow, especially on the road. Yep. Joe and Joe Burrow, Jared, Joe Burrow with his first NFL victory. His first victory over. It was the Jaguars. There you go. And the Browns, Jared. Yeah. They still ended up winning that game, right? They did. Cowboy, the Cowboys scored three touchdowns, made (laughs) all three two point conversions, so they scored twenty four straight points. Only the only the Browns. I'm stealing this from a Mechadon tweet, by the way. Only the Browns can be up forty one to fourteen, and their fans are still like, "Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god!" (laughs) And both teams at at one point they were like. One sc- only up by one score in the fourth quarter. Uh, Bengals end up scoring a late touchdown. Same with the Browns too, and both both the Bengals and the Browns with a victory. There you go. How often does that happen? Not often. Jared. Yeah, it's there's not often. It's not often. Mm-hmm. All right, that is all I have. All right. Uh, Tonight's ending music will be by The Dopamines. Uh, it's a punk band out of... I was about to say Dayton, but then I got scared and thought maybe it was Cincinnati. Dopamines. Awesome punk band. They're from either Dayton or Cincinnati. One of the two. And uh, they're going to be tonight's ending music. So with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer listen to local music and of course support your local podcasters by the way local coffee too can we get a hug for local coffee local coffee I, local beer local coffee it on sundays this is a coffee show <laughs> <laughs> on wednesdays or fridays as you guys know them uh this is a beer show all right sorry i don't know why i felt the need to interrupt the end of the show like that so with all of that being said like to encourage everyone to drink local beer and coffee, listen to local music, and of course support your local podcasters. Once again, this is the dopamines.
Uh, I forgot we're talking to YouTube. Hi, YouTube. <laughs> I was waiting to see if you're going to say something. <laughs> I'm just there, just like... Just zoned out. That was just me turning my brain off for a second. When you force yourself to talk for an hour straight and then all of a sudden you don't have to anymore, oh mm -hmm. my god, it's just like... Pfft. Yeah. You guys don't know. I mean, I'm not, I'm, not tell, I'm not asking you to feel sorry for us or anything, but like every once in a while, someone will give us crap. It's always on YouTube, by the way, so this is why I'm talking to you right now, YouTube. <laughs> Someone will give us crap for forgetting someone's name or for this or for that. And it's just like, unless you've stuck a microphone in front of your face for an hour and talked the entire time, you just don't know. Sorry. Mm -hmm. You just don't know. So if you want to give me crap, that's fine. And, and then share a link to your podcast. <laughs> oh, but most yeah. of you are great. That's, I mean, the fact of the matter is, is that in the six years or in the six seasons, Kyle and I've been doing this show. I can count on one hand the amount of people who have been, who have actually listened to the show, who have been like critical or dicks to us. And um, m most everyone else seems mm -hmm. super cool. But you wade the, but you wade in the waters of YouTube, and every once in a while, you'll you'll find someone being a dick. <laughs> All right, let's rejoin our audio listeners. Would once again like to thank the dopamines for ending today's show. Be sure to check them out in e in either. I could have looked it up during the uh, the break, but I didn't. In either Cincinnati or Dayton. Uh, Kyle, did you know that the Ohio League team in Cincinnati are called the Celts? The Celts or the Celts? Celts. Unlike the team in Boston, they know how to pronounce the letter C in Celtic. <laughs> yes uh i really like the modernized logo i made for them by the way so i might be buying one of those for myself here soon anyway th this show is not brought to you by my t-shirt store it is however brought to you by the mad canadian uh kyle was talking about the snore and heat a lot on on the uh, previous ad read i would like to plug the smoked which is also a really good versatile that's very versatile as well and then there's the S and P bud, which I know I got back here somewhere. That's the S and P bud. Um, those are, that's like your versatile trio. Like if you're someone who eats a lot of different stuff, um, you know, if you're, if you're like a, a beef eater, if that's, if that's what you're into, you eat a lot of hamburgers and steak and maybe beef ribs. Um, I would, I would really point you towards the carry steak. I would point you towards, um, the old fashioned is, is great, uh, for that. Uh, there's a lot of great options for beef. Um, but all three of these would also work on beef, but they also all work on chicken. They all work on vegetables. They all work on pork. Um, really feel like I'm forgetting one in particular that's good on beef and it's bothering me. Um, oh, the coffee and Q, the coffee and Q is fantastic on beef. Um, so there, there's like the coffee and Q is one that maybe isn't super versatile. It, it works in certain situations and it doesn't work, but it's really, really good when it works. Um, if you're someone who eats a big variety of things, uh, the S and P bud, the smoked and the Sonoran heat are going to be, that's, that's your, it's your versatile trio right there. Um, a little less specialized, a little more versatile. Um, the smoked and the Sonoran heat, for example, uh, go fantastic in my V8. I try and drink some V8 every once in a while. It's actually the knockoff Kroger brand, but that's okay. And uh, I drink, I put that in there a lot. It sort of gives the V8 a, a good spice. Uh, the S&P Bud is a potato cheat code. That is a potato cheat code right there. I don't care how you're making the potato. I really don't. Are you frying it? Are you baking it? Are you mashing? I don't care. Throw some S&P Bud in there and then thank me later. All of this and more you can find at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. We have a special promo code for the month of October. It is celebrating our one year anniversary with the Mad Canadian. Uh, that's a paper anniversary, is it not? I don't know. I'm not married. Kyle, you're the married one. You should know that. Uh, the promo code is one year, and that's that's one spelled out. O-N-E. Kyle, is that a nod to your old Twitter handle? 
the one spelled out. <laughs> ah, I see what he did there. Mad Canadian. Even if that was an accident, pretend like you did it on purpose. That's one spelled out. That's O N E year. And then the number 20 two zero. So that's one year two zero at checkout to get 20% off your entire order. The mad Canadian barbecue company where he has your butts covered. <laughs> 